running on my laptop. No. Nope. All right. I think we're on. This webinar is being recorded. All right. So the first thing we have to ask you is how was your last meeting? The one we just came home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good. Good, good. Um, so Jen and I were talking just a smidge before you guys came in. I don't know if, if you saw the little article for tomorrow's newsletter. I don't know if you were on that, Jeff. I, but... I made a prayer out to put you guys on it. Um, <laughs> I just put all the finance. It's a, it's oh, a yeah. nice little blurb for the, yeah. for the Is it all Friday done? community letter. It seems good, in my opinion, to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, Shannon I just made I updates just... today and then I fix them up. And then... Yeah, you're the final yes. blessing on those because you know the accuracy. Because I know if it's true. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or if we got a little too wordy. Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, what we were saying was that there's a lot of the same themes and and what I was talking about with Jeff earlier is that that's what we need. We need, you know, three, four, five burning themes that are in our executive summary, they're in the yep. budget book, they're in the communications, they keep coming around and around in this, the, those budget drivers. And um, we have Jen Day, as you know, on, on our leadership team, but she's also a town department head, which we were saying today is great because we can get the inside scoop on the town department meetings as well. And what she had said was that the town finance committee was super interested in just being able to document those budget drivers. Um, and so that's some of the things that we've already been talking about, but just to be sure that we can say, yep, it's you know the personnel costs because like you said in the article, 80% of our, of our costs are people. And, um, you know, maybe throw in some of the other little bullet points that we already have out there about fuel costs and technology and, um, and those SEL supports, those new positions are all, all the things that make our budget go up. Yeah, and I think specifically for this one that we're writing about, we wanted to kind of focus on the personal costs and, you know, why why they're there. Uh, and we'll just hit each bowl next week. Which referendum. Yeah. And and I the other thing that, that we were talking about in our team meeting today was that we haven't really heard much from the town leadership of, you know, we said it was going to be three percent, so it's gotta be three percent and you know y'all get out there and get your axes out. And it feels like this team is being really thoughtful about that, meaning that the town council finance committee at least, and, and wanting to ask a lot of questions and wanting to hear from each department what it is that's really going on and what's driving their budget increase. And is that something that this community needs? And so, you know, is that a valid ask? And instead of just saying, you know, we don't care, we have a number that we want to hit, so. Yeah, that's really encouraging. Last um, year went well in that regard yeah. too. Yeah, a sense of like, we we really want to understand the ask. Yes. And not just be like a numbers, number crunching exercise. Yes. Um, and uh, so the only thing that, that I've been focusing on is all the little ups and downs of the items in motion. Um, We've been talking a lot about enrollment. We've been talking about K2 enrollment that we thought was down and now it's starting to come Pick up, up again. again. And I think that's just that sort of delayed. Yeah. I'm not sure if I want my kid in school. Oh, wait, yeah, what a great idea. School's going good. Kind of. Well, I think, you know, right? right. And so we've also had this, you know, we're getting through an entire year with everyone back. Right, and now we're getting through an entire year with everyone back with, you know, um, fewer of the restrictions, and and that's that's felt consistent. That's felt, you know, I mean, I so I think that's and Scarrow's growing, right? And so the idea that we're coming out of this pandemic and and hybrid and remote, and now we're back, and I think you know people are understanding that. 
And we have we've we've listed enrollment as like an uncertainty or an item in motion or one of the labels that we put on there, but um, it's also a budget driver because if you know that you're going to have increased or steady enrollment, then your costs are, you're not going to be cutting costs by reducing positions. Yeah. Um, another bullet point is the whole ESSER shift, like the fact that we've spent down almost all of those funds and now we just have enough left to do some things next year but not everything that we're doing this year and i i did post up a little did I? oh my gosh that's terrible i think i posted up something um yes i did the chart of federal funds on the website um i sent the link out to yeah. the budget page where i've been just every every time i think of something new i just sort of stuff it up in there and um, I've had a few lessons on website. I'm not allowed to design anything. It's all in a template. And there's a webmaster who would <laughs> come and get me if I do anything really crazy. But um, you have more control kind of, with this one than the last one, then? Um, it's actually really, really cool. I mean, not to go off into the weeds, but the way that the web platform is designed. I think it's really kind of intuitive and really interesting in that it, it, it has this whole little sort of bucket of resources that you can pull up and you can you can upload a bazillion different documents and then you can decide, oh, I want this one to go here and that one to go there. Oh, okay. So you have like this library nice. of resources. Yeah, that's awesome. And the, the coolest thing I've found so far is that if you need, a, need to update a document, you can just replace it and this, the site knows where it lives on the site. So if you have it in three or four places, it just replaces it like that. Wow. And I've done that twice now with the calendar because yeah, that's helpful. I've had three different versions of the um, town finance committee calendar and then that big grid funding yeah. thing that we've done. So it's pretty slick actually. Awesome. And I think it's a resource that we can use again. Like, so when the newsletter goes out, maybe we take the extract the budget article and we could post it up there and we could say you know here are articles that we've written because you've already had one out there and now we could do mm -hmm. like a little the archive them. Yeah. Budget articles. because otherwise they just live inside the um, newsletter which is good too those are archived but they're not necessarily like people are necessarily going to search them for right. budget yeah. yeah. I'm just, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's funny because back in the very olden days, we used to only have our own budget page and I would put everything and anything up there. And then we decided to do the one budget portal for town school, which was great. But I always felt a little awkward trying to put like all my stuff in there, yeah. you know, like it's not all about Flashing. school budget, you yeah. know? And so um, now I'm kind of flipping it back and saying, okay, we actually do need to have space mm -hmm. for more stuff. Yeah. Um, that's just ours. So, so that's been kind of cool. So um, are you guys comfortable with just kind of pulling communication points out of the intro and executive summary, like you were saying that you've been doing. That's how do I've that? been doing things for just communication purposes. But yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the easiest way to just just grab what's already grab there. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what was highlighted to begin with, and, that, and we want to just keep highlighting the same things. Yeah, I think if, if you're <laughs> if you're if we're if people are hearing a consistent message in a variety of different ways, mm -hmm. right? Right. Then that's probably the repetition most, is key. Most powerful. Yeah. And then, and I think, you know, this team, the, the school board finance committee and the school board as a whole has more the viewpoint of the community. Like, you know, if if you have a question or something resonates with you, chances are it's gonna be a similar experience for the rest of the community that's gonna come out and vote. Where with us things get kind of muddled because we know too much, kind of. Right. You know, we can't yeah, you live in it. 
Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you ask me what I think is the important budget message, I'll probably talk for like six months because the, like, I, I don't know how to, how to find what resonates with, with somebody who's not immersed in it. Detach yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. So I think, I think that's cool. Um, are there, um, would it be worthwhile for us to do any kind of like a little talking points document? I think so. Do you want to do that? I had linked into the agenda, which probably share up here, couldn't I? Let's see. Um, I had linked in the uh, uh, intro, guitar, summary, and slides and such. Yeah, I have all those things. But then down here at the bottom, I had the talking points and takeaways. And it's, all it is is just a Google Doc with a bunch of little ideas on it. Let me see if I can't find that. Do we have another um, meeting before our department meeting with the council finance? Not technically, and that was going to be my next question. Um, meeting before May fourth. Is that when our meeting is now? I can't even. No, the not council? the joint one. When we have our department meeting, when I think we, it's like May. When we late. get together with May the um, finance committee. Yeah, is that is that's that? actually May. Third, the school budget. Uh, that's our finance. Oh, but, no, May, but our finance committee yeah. is May 12th. Just yeah. the May school third. Board committee is May 12th. Okay, so, so we don't have another one before the third. I was kind of wondering if maybe we should do a quick sort of meeting on the 28th before the, the third school board meets. You mean before, before the third, meeting. right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I have a few questions about the budget, like nothing significant, but things that I feel like the council might also would be interested in. Well, and that's that's the other thing, right? Because again, if, if you have a burning question, chances are other people have they the might. same question. Yeah. So we could, um, we can bullet those out today, just throw them out there. Yeah. And then if there's something where it's like, you know, you want to have like an FAQ style response. Well, that's what I'm it. wondering. Do we want like if we have our own FAQ? I know that last year we did an FAQ with the council and it sounds like they're sort of working on that right now. Yeah, they're kind of pulling some stuff together too, right? Yes, so. it sounds like it. Um, and I haven't heard anything from anyone in the community yet, but I would imagine somewhere there'll be some questions, but. Well, you guys must have some things, I mean. I do have a few questions. Yeah. I wouldn't say I have a ton, but I do have some. All right, I'm wandering through the universe here, but I have, I have an object. It's this thing. So, so let me just. You can also only get to the round table by just being compiling more questions. Yes, true. Right, that's the yes. other thing. I'm and those there. are coming up already. They, they, uh, those will all be done before we get to before we get to uh, the town council finance committee. So that's good, right? Because you'll mm -hmm. have whatever kind of feedback you have from the community. Is that all about the budget as well? It looks like there'll be coverage. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know that I technically can do all of them. I hope I don't want to do nobody them. watching this is getting seasick because I'm that I can't fly around the place. How do I do that? How do I find mm -hmm. it? <laughs> but still, is the doodle poll to decide who's going to do what? The round table. Round table? Yeah. yeah. And I created it. And, and now you don't know who's in there. It is. So this little thing that I just put up on the screen, this is this was tied into the agenda for the budget workshops. And it was just a bunch of ideas that we had thrown down. Why should the community support the budget? What it allows us to do? What are the unmet needs? Um, the education budget increase does not equal the property tax rate increase. <laughs> That's like, it's an annual right? thing yeah. to address. Yeah. Our number is not the number. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that I don't know that that's like 
necessarily the subject of an article. It's more like a, oh, by the way. That might be a good like social media one that says like our net increase is this and that when combined with the town, the impact of the tax rate is. We could use that neat little chart that Tom had on a slide that was um, the tax rate change over the past years. Oh yeah, that was kind of nice. That was actually, I think it's been really good. So um, let's see, ideas for communications, tax rate change chart from town presentation. I'm sure I can get hold of that. Um, so that kind of goes with this one, which is the education budget change does not equal the property tax increase. Um, and you guys have already talked about the drivers, um, like the first two little bullets right up here are in Jenna's article. Um, it was all of us. It was totally collaborative, that one. Was it? Okay. Yes. Well, you sent it to me, so you get to take credit. <laughs> <laughs> take it while you can. And always when you're the one who starts it, you get to take credit because it's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest, the hardest thing. Everybody else can edit yes. what you did. It's so much easier. easier. Yeah. It's just word vomit and then everyone else comes in. <laughs> yep. Clean it up. Yeah. Um, so actually, let me go down here a little bit because my point in doing this was questions for FAQ. Um, so Kristen, you want to throw out some of the things that you were thinking about and we could just- Some of my budget here. specific questions yeah. or communication things. I think your budget specific questions uh, because that we can start capturing some of the ones that you have and then add to that as other people yeah, way in. I think a question I have that I do believe is going to also probably come from council is about our high fund balance use mm -hmm. relative to other That's years. That's a really good one. High use of fund balance. So I have a little um, story about fund balance that I wrote some years ago about what it is and how it works and why you use it. and. Um, I might be able to fluff that up a little okay. bit. Um, I know things have been so wonky the last few years. Well, yeah, exactly. And, and so the reason that we've generated such a big fund balance is twofold. One is that the CRF money we were allowed to supplant, which you're never allowed to do with federal right. monies, but they let us, you know, actually take things that were budgeted for and then use them yeah, in other ways. Yeah. Um, sorry, ESSER was that way, CRF wasn't that way, but of course they had to have like eight different sets of boards. I know. But there was a, an opportunity for us to say, oh no, we're gonna pay for this with federal funds. So that was one thing, but the biggest thing was we didn't do things. Like we didn't do yeah. activities. We didn't have facilities, upgrades and maintenance and things because we didn't let anybody in the building. Yes. Um, there was, you know, no sports. There were no buses to drive the kids to sports. Yeah. And with hybrid learning, the bus activity was about half. No. So, or less, much less. Yeah. So um, we do have a document somewhere, and I'm going to add a note to this. My use of fund balance. How was okay. and surplus generated? over past two years. And so um, another piece to this is the strategy of hanging on to some of our fund balance because you don't want to have that cliff. Yes. And how do you avoid having, you know, oh God, we used a million and a half in fund balance and now, now we're going to turn around and have nothing the following year because we have used it all up. So how do you preserve enough to step it down and not have it just be a vast hole. Um, so that's like part of the story too. Is, right, so we're in a good position to not fall off the cliff next year. Right, exactly. So balance. what's the strategy? The, yeah, so we don't create 
a huge hole. This is like super um, professional. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll use better words. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to answer these now. We're just following here. No, I, I, I mean, can also add questions to an FAQ doc. Well, exactly. Easier. And I, I think that. Yeah. I think this is like exactly what I'm looking for is kind of that brain dump of, okay, what's the burning questions? What are the things that we want to remember to talk about? Because chances are that at some point in the last 10 years, I've written some little white paper on just about everything that comes up. Well, and, and also what Kate did, which is probably the best I've seen anywhere is, is really outline um, all of the different CRF and ESSER funds, when they came, what they were used for, what yep. they are, and then how we've kind of planned to, as we've talked about, step it down over yep. a two-year period as opposed to just all of a sudden the money's gone and we've got to yeah. Right, because, because there's a strategy to that as well. The strategy <laughs> for use of those funds was a whole nother little conversation and, and we were kind of careful about, well, here's the money you have to use first. Yeah. And we'll just set this aside and we'll come back around to it because we're gonna need it in the future. And that's kind of how it played out. Yeah. Um, right, and then there was a very, very small, particularly those first couple of um, funds, you had to commit stuff <laughs> within like a two month period or something. The crazy. CRF was insane. It was like, it yeah. had to be all spent within six months of when it yeah. came to you. And that, you know, frankly, that was mostly because the state kind of sat on the money until the deadline was rolling up and they realized that they didn't have anything to spend it on. So if you, if like you anticipate that we're still gonna have, I guess for me, but because I lived it not as much as you did, but. I feel like I have a really good handle on that and that's behind me. Like I'm done with it, but if you're still getting those questions, we still have, we have all of those things that the we wrote as stuff. we were going along. Yes, you yes. gave us tons of information. We wrote out a yeah. bunch of articles that people knew. So like we could we find those well, let, are, are coming um, back. They might be helpful. Let's make that like a separate question because you may hear that as you go out into the community because people are sometimes a little behind and not as tuned yep. in. Mm -hmm. Well, and in the town is just spending theirs, right? True. So right. they they might not true. understand that the schools is pretty much been wrapping and, up, been and done. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a really good point. Like if you're sitting in a round table, you might still hear that sort of resonating message of, "Oh, you guys got so much money. What do you even need tax dollars for?" Yep. And you know, for that to be a finite thing that was specifically used for a short period of time. Yeah. And then guess what? It's business as usual. Yeah. It might be helpful if you went, if you went back. I'll have to find them and I'll send them to you. Okay. Cause it might give you just a high level. I can reshare money had to be spent, what we did with it. Let me reshare this document that I'm typing into just with us. I think it just has BOE on it because this is from the workshop. But I'll put you guys here so it shows up in your email and that way you can just link stuff into this. So that's gonna be our little working collection doc. That's my real name. That's good. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. I hope no one's watching. Shannon, does this look really professional? She's like watching the road. Can she, do, was she talking to you before? Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She could hear us. She's driving them. So yeah. we told her not to pay too much attention. <laughs> That's not what I said. Be careful. Well, I called in. I'm here. Out. I'm listening. <laughs> Don't talk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you're really loud. You came, you're kind of loud there. Scared me. Uh, good Bluetooth she's got. All right. So this is our thought capturing doc to add resources and ideas. Hooray. All right. So yeah, like to go back to what you said, Kristen, there was a ton of communication 
lots of older communication available. We can revisit and reuse. Um, and in, in the um, another place that I tend to write lots of stories are in the financial reports, like the quarterlies. And so I could go back to your end financial written report and also the um, little presentation that we do at the end of the year for some of those questions about the fund balance and where did we not spend money and why is there money left over and how did that all work out? Because um, that's definitely, that's a big thing. I mean, throwing a million bucks of fund balance at some things. Mm -hmm. It's not something I've ever had the opportunity to do before. Right. Um, generally, we, we generate $300,000, $500,000 a year in fund balance because we always come in under budget because we have to. Um, yeah. But something with that volume is, is pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. And I think that the case that we should make is that that money does belong to the taxpayers and it makes good sense and it is the ethical thing to do to use it as revenue while we can yeah um and again you know we're we've got people out in the community who are kind of bridging their way back to normal economy and normal life yeah. and living at the fuel tank and yes. stuff like that it's, you know seven hundred dollars did you get oil Oh, gee, that's a lot. Ouch. Well, we have yeah, we have fuel and energy costs on our budget cost averages. Surprise. Yeah, I don't. I feel like that's one sentence, and everyone's going to understand that right. one. <laughs> I know. Right? Like, it, it's not like yeah, yeah. yeah we're all living it. It's just yeah. like that's that's like a tweet, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like fuel cost. Yeah, don't forget the schools have to heat stuff and run stuff too. Right. Right. And and Tom mentioned that when when they were doing the he and Jeff were doing the presentation to the town council, like I think there was a comment from a counselor about, well, you know, are you taking into account the effects of these inflationary? Yep drivers on people's pocketbooks and worrying about paying their taxes and and Tom's response was yes and it's also driving our budget yes. at the right. same time so yeah. um, it's not like you know we're in a vacuum and and everybody else is having a tough time yes right. we're feeling the same things right for sure right not that we're not cognizant of people's of pressures on people's pocketbooks but yeah they're they're ours too mm -hmm. Um, do you know if we're getting the town council questions in advance of any? I don't know. Um, I had asked Colette for the little slide deck thing here, which I haven't even had a chance to look at before, before the, third. the third. I hope so. And I think my second part to that question is, are we covering off on our CIP budget at that meeting, or do they do CIP as its own? They have a whole separate segment for CIP, but I listened into um, the first meeting of finance committee review that was kind of like, how are we going to do this? Did yeah. you see that one? It was last Monday I'm sure or Tuesday. I did. Yeah. Oh, was that it really was, quick one, which it was, is April exactly. and John? Exactly. Yeah. It was really fast. It was just April and John. And I remember them saying, well, maybe it would be more efficient. I don't know if it was them or Tom that said, maybe it would be more efficient just to hit CIP items while you have the department head there. right there yeah. or the school or, you know, the people who could speak to those items. So I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they, it sounded like there was head nodding, but I don't know yeah. if that's really going to be the plan. Well, then I'll go through the CIP budget now and answer the questions. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would, I would, I would be prepared for that because it makes good yeah. sense to me. And I think in terms of process too, is there anything, I know we've talked about doing some workshop on our capital reserve fund, but is that going to come up anywhere in the budget or is that something we can do down so the road? The capital reserve fund has technically already been created by vote of the board because yeah. when we did the budget last year, we took the votes that we needed to take to establish that. Yeah, I guess I mean in terms of like how but we how can do use, use that, it? what can, it can be used for. Yeah, exactly. are we using it in this budget? Well, the interesting thing is um, 
the first direct answer is yes, we are going to use it in this budget. Okay. Um, we've identified a couple of items that would normally be appropriated in the CIP budget that we can use those funds for. We don't want to spend the whole thing because it's $488,000 and change. Um, and the whole point is to have something that keeps going. Yeah. Um, I think we identified $199,000 worth of stuff. Okay. So about, you know, a little less than half of it that could be paid for by that reserve fund. So um, I'm going to put that on here. And did you say that um, reserve fund gets replenished with like fund balance that we have? It can, it be, can be. And it, again, it would be an action of the of the board. So think about when we do those transfers at the end of the year and we say we're going to put X amount of money into the school nutrition fund. Yep. Well, so we can do the same thing with a capital reserve fund. We can okay. vote and say um, we have $500,000 of surplus and we're going to use $300,000 for the budget and we're going to put 50 grand into the reserve fund. Yeah. And, and we can continually do that over time. So you continually replenish it. Yeah. And then you have it to draw on in the next year for, for capital stuff. Do those funds have to be like used in the budget or can you at any point in the year say we now want to do an enrollment study and we're going to use our capital reserve funds? I think you'd have the to authority that. to just vote to use them. Okay. Yeah. Outside um, of the budget cycle. Yes. And I, I think a good example of that was when we, <laughs> it wasn't a great great fun, but the example of when we had the portables issue yeah. and it, it came up outside of the budget cycle and we're, oh my God, we've got this crazy yeah. enrollment burst. We need to put a portable at the schools. And if we don't order it now, we're yeah. stuck. And so we used capital reserves, the town's capital reserves, and they were able to vote and say, yeah, okay, use, so them, use them now. Um, so yes, we can definitely do that. And the interesting thing about capital reserve funds is when you look at statute, it starts out by saying, this is what a capital reserve fund is. Here's how the money goes in it. And it's just super simple. It's just, you know, you establish it and then you can add to it. Um, and then it goes on to say, well, you, you really should use it for these things. It's a capital reserve. So it should be this, that, the other thing. And it's, you know, facilities are really popular um, and technology and, and um you know, some of the, the ongoing maintenance costs of equipment, particularly. But then it goes on to say that you can use it for anything that's in any budget category. So <laughs> it's like, okay, this is what you should do. But then really, you know, okay. whatever. Do what you want. Whatever you like. Use right? it for it. Yeah, go for it. You know, so. Have at it. <laughs> but in practice, most communities who have them or school departments who have them are using them for a slightly more targeted purpose. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it makes sense for us to, to use it as we build our CIP budget and it just becomes one more funding source. So like some things are appropriated, meaning tax dollars, some things are bonded, yeah. um, meaning borrowed funds. We've had things come out of the reserve funds that the town has, like the school impact fees reserve fund is where the portable stuff came from. And now we can add another funding source which would be our own reserve fund. Is that in our CIP budget this year? And I apologize again. If um, I find to it's not that. identified and that's something that I need to do. What capital items will do we propose to pay from our new reserve fund? Um, the town actually usually assigns funding choices yeah. to CIP. You know that yeah. from the past, like the whole argument of is it bonded or is it yep. tax dollars? And we don't have any say ever. So um, the items that were identified were basically done between me and Ruth Porter, just kind of looking at the list and saying, why don't we okay. see what's what. Um, but it's on the town's capital budget that it actually labels the funding sources. So I want to make sure that we have something on the school side that calls that out. Um, and I could use one of the documents that we already have as some of the detail about CIP and just sit, you know, add a column. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it would be helpful for us our, and for the council to know that we are paying for some of our own. Absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. And that was really the the strategic thought behind that was, you know. 
oh, look, they built a, a, a reserve fund and they're just going to sit on it because they're, they're dumb people. Yeah, <laughs> they, don't, they don't know how to use it. But no, actually, look, we have this money and, and it, was a plan. it was a windfall from last year. It was a good plan how to use it. So yeah. here we go, let's use it. Um, I'm going to say use our capital budget spreadsheet because there's that sort of colorful sideways one that has a lot mm -hmm. of detail in the back in the um, appendix and add proposed funding sources. And it, they're not on there mostly because um, when I made that spreadsheet, I didn't have that information yet. So we can update that and say, here's how this stuff is going to be funded. And there's um, a multiple ways to sort through that and say, here are the things that are going to affect the tax. tax. Yep. Ask, here are the things that are going to be proposed to be bonded. And then reserves, maybe come up with a good little format. That will, yeah. That's a good one. Anything else burning you up there, Kristen? Oh, I've got a whole list here. Oh my goodness. Well, well I already know. I had that. I made these a while ago, so I'm trying to remember what I was getting out with some of them. But I know that you are here on the health insurance. <clears throat> um, oh, I did have one question about the. Um, the vehicle on IT, which I know will come up from the town site anyways, because they share that department, but why do they have a, a vehicle? They have a bunch of vehicles, actually. Well, I don't, I shouldn't say a bunch. I think they, because they, they have a centralized office storage space downstairs here, yeah. and they have to truck the stuff wherever it's needed. So if you need a new monitor or you need a new desktop computer or you need a big pile of laptops most of the stuff is shipped here and then taken to the fire station or it's taken to Wentworth and installed as needed so they bop around here all the time and they need a van or something they, they have like um what do you call these things? caravans the same things that we use okay at uh, the bus department so that's what this is for. Is to yeah, one of the bands is on. dead or dying. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they have, I think they put little racks in the back and stuff and outfitted them a little bit so that they can okay. drive Take care of the stuff. Stuff safely. But yeah, they they uh, they're sort of in the delivery business half the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Um in let me put that on here. With the um, um why does IT need a vehicle? Yeah, I think when I was reading through it, I was just thinking, I think they had something in there about traveling all around, but I was like, we have lots of staff that drive from building to building. Why is IT different? Do you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Sure. And so, I mean, I guess it, it kind of goes to the philosophy about what point do you give somebody a, a school and vehicle? Or right, a town versus owned vehicle versus just getting a car and we'll reimburse you for yes. mileage. And I would guess that it's more like the constant and the special frequency. nature of it. Yeah. That makes um, sense. And the transporting of stuff that's right. um, that expensive commodities. Yep. Yeah. Like if sense. I'm a OT and I work at two different buildings, I'm just putting myself in my backpack in my car and going back and forth, but I'm not schlepping yes. important stuff. So so that makes sense. Let me make some notes here. Um, transport safely. Well, this is going to be a good sentence. Equipment <laughs> to town locations. Right. You said this didn't have to be really smart, right? Right. <laughs> Yet. We'll make it. We'll make it pretty. <laughs> You want another one? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Um, so the Wentworth is losing their Title I ed tech, academic support literacy. Is that position showing up in another building? Um, Title I, we think, is going to be 
at eight corners or blue point. I'm looking at blue because I'm trying to remember the latest and greatest on that. Um, and Title I funds are allocated based on the yeah. um, what's left of free and reduced yes. lunch numbers, right? Um, so it's supposed to be adding resources in the least, um, in the lowest economic stratus building or yeah. school in your district. So it's shifted so that it's back to K2. And I don't know if you remember, it's actually, it's been too long, you wouldn't remember, but it used to be at eight corners. I, I think it's only been a few years since it's been at Wentworth. I was gonna say three, four years maybe. Yeah, and, and so, when the um, economic status of the students shift, then the resources are supposed to follow. Okay. And there, again, there are supplemental resources over and above, yeah. right? So I know the conversations that Monique has been having with Kelly Crosby have been about, well, how do we reorganize our yeah. academic support? Because we, we still have, have the need. Yeah. yeah, they have, you know, they have kids with, with needs and what are we gonna do to make sure that kids' needs are being met, but we won't have that extra yeah um so. position yeah that's a lot mm -hmm. to cover yeah it's actually there's a teacher and a half in ed tech and the ed tech is really sort of semi building ed tech and and that can be absorbed um but the teacher position is what's yeah. going to go I think right now they have it divided out so that one the title one person is doing a writing intervention and they also have a separate person who's doing ELA in general literacy reading um, and I think that you know the logical thing would be to try to sort of collapse those services um, I'm going to make a note here about like federal funds what have they paid for and what will be reduced because that could equal COVID and title. So I think I think we we hit the whole COVID thing pretty hard in the budget book, but I'm not sure that we had the information to talk about Title I. Yeah. When we put that out there. Um, so, I mean, it would be worth mentioning for sure. Yeah. I think somewhere I did something about where what's actually paid for out of the title grants, like the ongoing kind of stuff. Who's doing more than that? Let's see if I have that someplace. Yeah, I don't remember seeing that, but that certainly doesn't mean really it send it to me. It, if I remember rightly, I think it was in a financial report somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I, I tend to sort of brain dump into those quarterlies and then we post them and then we forget them, but there's some decent resources in there. Quarter one, yeah. goodbye. Yeah. Quarter two, uh, yeah, I've got to do quarter good. three. That's another another good yeah. reason for us to, uh, to meet. Did we settle on whether we were gonna get together? I'm now I'm following the squirrel, but- um, You mean before May 3rd? Yeah, I mean, I think it, I'm trying to think if there was a, I had a question somewhere on here, if we were, oh, just if there was anything in particular, but I get that we wanted to highlight for the town council, but I suppose if we're just sticking with the same saying, thing, saying what we're saying. saying, yeah. Well, I guess I will ask, the, I'll ask Colette if we're supposed to get any Q, I would put Q and A, but they won't give us the answers, just Q from the, <laughs> from the town council finance committee in advance. I'll find out if there's something. And then if you look at this little um, slide deck thing, I'll, I'll do this. <laughs> so first slide is their overview. Second slide is budget drivers. Third slide is responding to community needs. Well, that's kind of interesting. So like if you were in public safety, you'd say we're getting all these calls and we need more firefighters or more yeah more and i think some officers. of that too was about their responding to the feedback in the survey right, right. The survey says so right here yeah but, but it, 
what does yeah what it, how does what you're requesting meet some of those yeah some of those needs and interests and i think we could we could kind of well onto that we exist right to right address our community's <laughs> new needs. initiatives key capital investments. oh so it's in there so there that's in go. the slide deck for each person to put if applicable so i mean i guess they maybe they don't want to go line by line in it yeah. but they maybe if you have some big ones okay. and budget notes discussion Oh, so that's good. So you have the format. This is the template. Colette just sent it to me this afternoon. I just asked for it. And so, um, <laughs> what do you need us to do for that? Or well, what I was thinking that? was I, I would um, probably make a copy of it before the third and, and sort of pull out some materials that we already have because we already have a ton of slides. They yes. weren't even going to give this to us because Tom told Colette, well, they've got all their own slides. They've got a ton yeah. of stuff. Right. But I said, well, let's look at it so that we're not just, you know, freewheeling it and not yeah. giving them the kind of information that they're looking for. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can just take these general areas and repurpose some of our own yeah. slides that we've already used. I think it's helpful for us to present the same way that all the that's what I was presenting. thinking too. Yeah. 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 Well, if they One have to consider the school department in some ways and as a department of the town and weigh our interests over the other against the other departments, then they need to have the same Basics. information. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to make slides from that urge our own info and I can draft something up and share it out so that we can play with that and we wouldn't necessarily have to get together if we feel confident we could just like share stuff electronically and play around with it yeah but maybe it's, it's really a document to start adding our questions into yeah I'm just thinking with the round tables and whatever questions that we're getting, should we have a separate document of just like these are the questions that we're asked today? Yeah. Yeah. Here, well, Kate. <laughs> um, we'll have to create a document and whoever's attending those can add their notes in. Yeah. Just keep yeah. adding. I you. think um, Tom had said that they were going to provide a note taker of some kind. Oh, said right. someone from the town will be there. Um, yeah. Because uh, Tom asked, how can we support the board and the and the town council in that effort and the the response was you know they hoped that the um, counselors and the board members would be able to actually do the engagement piece but if somebody could be there and take notes yeah then we're going to end up with a big old q a and you know in the past we've had them where it's like here's all the questions about the town and here's all the questions about schools all in one big document mm -hmm. highlight the ones that we can answer and yeah, hopefully they'll be broken up by department. Well, even if it starts we'll out as kind of in. a just dumping grounds, I'm sure we can divvy them out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I do actually have a note here on the CIP that I I anticipate for anyone who has read the budget that it might come up at the roundtables, so it might be helpful to know. And I know it's not the first time we've seen it, but the bus software. Oh. If we could have something to like elaborate on what, what that, that is. allows us to do I, and again i know that gotcha. sarah has asked for it in the past and it's never yeah. come to fruition there's a whole um i want to look and see if, if that's that's not going to be in jen's budget story because it's actually under transportation yeah but we can definitely get some info on that we did a whole little needs analysis thing and, and jen is very Project oriented, so yeah. she has a ton of notes. On it, so. I think just some basic understanding for the board to um, know if we get asked the question uh, of why do you need this expensive bus? And I know I've heard it in the past, but it's been a while. So, yeah, even at the last budget workshop, she scoped it so well <laughs> to the, to the software. Yeah, the yeah. bus one, did she? Well, it's it's the basic uh, reason for it is that it will allow you to electronically check kids on and off. So when each kid, every kid, every trip, so you'll like know destinations are too. You'll know who's supposed to be on the bus, 
the child walks up, there's like a little iPad. The child walks up and can either key in a number or the driver can key in a number or it can be a QR code. There's all different ways of doing it. It could be a badge that the kid waves like they do with the laptops for the little kids. And so you always know exactly who's on a bus, who's supposed to be on a bus and where they are. And there is GPS in it. Um, I was going to say not this a, isn't about where, whether it's on time so parents know if it, the bus is Yes, late. it has that, but what it doesn't have yet and what we're not promising is I can go on my phone app and know where my kid's bus is because that's a security risk. Yeah. Yes. Like if I'm, you know, Joe Smith and I want to know where bus 33 is, mm -hmm. that's a little scary. Yeah. Um, but if we have control over it, we know where bus 33 so is. So parents can call. And exactly. And if bus 33 is hung up, then there can be a message sent. If there's traffic, we can right. see it. Yeah. Um, so like a minor accident, they're going to be delayed. Right. Like, like Jenna was saying, if they're tearing up one road, right. for example. Now I have to stand there for 30 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, um, so that's the basic function of okay. it. But um, I'm sure there's a description that we can share. And again, I think just linking stuff right into this document for us isn't a bad idea just to get us started. Um, description of the need and what it will do. You're doing great, Kristen. What, <laughs> I think on that request to like, how does something like, like that make it into this budget? But like, what is it just because it's going to be in Why is it this for budget? so long that already been an identified need for? I think for All this right. one, they they had mentioned just it assisted with the contact tracing and stuff like that. That's how it. Yeah, I would sort of kind of highlight it a little exactly. more. Exactly. Yeah, it was it was brought to the fore specifically because of contact tracing, and like you said, it's been something we've talked yeah. about for ages. And there's I know a, parents want it. Right, and there's yeah. a there's a couple things too. I mean, one thing is that this kind of software has um, developed over time to be a, there there's a lot better products out there okay. that are more sophisticated and um, more user friendly and and it's just kind of like any technology like the, the field has grown and, and you can get a better product than you could have gotten some years ago but Jenna's absolutely right it's because you know we needed to know who was on a bus and we had seating charts and we yeah. had kids, you know, in masks and was that the right kid and was they were they really sitting yeah. next to this one. Not that we're necessarily going to get that granular with the software, but it did just kind of bring it up again and say, okay, is there a way that we can do this more effectively, more efficiently, yeah. and know who we've got, where we've got, when we've got. Yeah. Um, so uh, well, and there's there's also <clears throat> from the driver's point of view, there's it's more complicated because of daycare drop-offs and locations yeah. like where, where kid, like it's going? it's not just hey that kid gets on the bus every day at the same time and I drop my like it's not. I don't know how they keep track of. It's. I think probably much that's more, another thing that gets more and more complicated every year because it's like Susie takes the bus there on Tuesday, home on yeah. Wednesday. Right. It's not somewhere. Yeah. It's not consistent. It's not consistent right. at all. Well, yeah, because daycare is driver. getting a lot more challenging. Well, right. right. And, and, and if you think about the kind of folks we're, you know, we're recruiting anybody and everybody to try to be an effective yeah. bus driver. And you can yeah. have people who are amazing drivers, but they've never done this mm -hmm. kind of crowd management stuff before. It's a lot, yeah. And if you're not and having the a road. career as a bus driver, yeah. that's not even a thing anymore. Right. Well, it's, well, it's, rely it's, on the kindergarten to say like, I'm going there for school. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> and there's definitely yes. rules and fail safes around that. Like, yeah. you know, the kindergartner doesn't get to say they're going somewhere else. Right. Like it has to be right. in writing from mom. But you know that's exactly it, right? And and the more complicated the family circumstances get, which is every which year is a lot more, and more complicated. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's an um, excellent point. I'll say here who would contact you with more of a priority, but has been a developing need. Anyway, 
Yeah, we'll get some more info on that. I think that's a good one. Well, and families are just cobbling together so many different coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Childcare has gone down. Yes. Yeah. Down it's a crazy. hole. Yeah. And yeah, it's like everybody's stepping up to try and fill a after school gap. Let's see, look at that now. I love that that's in the budget now. <laughs> see? <laughs> this is what we want. We want yep. you to bring the question that's like, what the hell is that? And then we can go, yes. And then we can say, yes, yep. I want that. Yep. I need that. That's the job, right? help people understand the why um the facilities scheduling responsibilities that mm -hmm. we are having to take over yeah. can we quantify how much of a job like a position that role is like i just want i want the council to understand that this was a job that existed in their budget that is now absorbed yeah into yeah. our budget and it's and does it, it it falls in athletics right in activities well so not it's, it's a little more complicated than that because athletics and activities is taking the lead on it just because they're the ones that use the inside space the most yeah and i don't know if it says this any place directly in our budget book but it's the first phase of this transfer if you will is just indoor yeah. school facilities, right? So the use of those spaces is pretty limited when it comes to outside groups. We don't know exactly how much time it's gonna okay. take. So the town has a full-time person, Brandy, yeah. who does that as one of the tasks that she does. In a meeting that we had with community services, the number was tossed around that it was probably maybe 15 hours a week on average. Okay. Um, 15 to 20, sometimes it's busy or sometimes nothing happens. Yeah. Um, so we are increasing the athletics yeah, secretary. Yeah, is significant when right? you only have a part-time But the secretary is also, I mean, the hope is that she's gonna be able to do more than just that because yes. they really have other needs okay. that they, you know, we're trying to get back to a full-time position that they had for years yeah. and then it was cut. Um, so I don't think that athletics is going to be able to absorb the whole job. So we've been talking about that between facilities and up here. And um, facilities has some room in their budget without adding a position, but maybe transferring some duties. But I also think that we might have some capacity up here. And I just floated that idea today to, to the cold group that um, Melissa, our new receptionist, is has been awesome. And she's willing to take on every any task, every task. She's always looking for something to do. And so I had the idea that until we know how much time it really takes, we can't hire somebody. Because you can't say, hey, we have this job. We don't know what it yeah. is. You want to come do it? Yeah. Right, we can't guarantee how many hours it is or, or anything like that. So I feel like in this first moment that we should try to kind of contain that within our existing personnel. Yeah. And so I haven't talked to the poor woman because she wasn't here when I- <laughs> When you <laughs> offered her up. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I offered her up, she wasn't here today. So I mean, we literally had that conversation for the first time today. So, but um, I mean, to, to go back to, the whole point of this is that the town is like, once again, offloading a project that they took on and, and now they're saying you do it. That said, it makes absolutely no sense for them to be doing it. It never did, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, I mean- Well, because there was, there was also like a duplication efforts with respect to the scheduling software that was being right. used. Everything had to be entered twice. Everything has to be vetted through the school leadership anyway. So it was like, it was just a completely inefficient approach. Yeah. So by by adding the, the module to software that we're are like the, the um, we're Mike already and Jordan using. were already using, there's gonna be a learning curve obviously and an implementation dip and, you know, trying to figure out, okay, how, what, how much time is this actually gonna take? And so initially that's gonna take a lot more time because you're figuring it out, but then 
Yeah, yeah we'll and, and Jordan and Heather have taken the lead. Heather's the part-time secretary have taken the lead on trying to set things up and trying to make mm -hmm. sense of what we're gonna, how we're gonna do it. Um, but we do need somebody to be, to be the point person to actually take a call from the you know dance studio who wants to come do their yes. thing in, in the auditorium. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and so, I mean, it, a year from now, we could be sitting here saying, oh my gosh, this is like a full-time job all of a sudden. And now yeah. we know, right? but we don't, don't know. we don't know that. And we don't hear that. We hear that it's a little piece of somebody else's job. Yeah. I think when I think about that little piece, I guess the reason I have it on here is I want, when we start getting into like the weeds of, well, don't you think you guys can, I and mean, then I know they can't go line by line, but like, do you really need half of an athletic secretary it's like well yeah we right. actually do and we're also going to redeploy some hours from other people other places yeah we haven't asked for any extra right right that we're going to try to absorb this until we know what the actual yes. nature of the job is yeah 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 and and you know i, th I just think over, overall again it's that theme of these are these are really conservative requests there there's nothing here right. that's you know, hey, it'd be really neat if, yeah, you wow, know. Yeah, that's just that. <laughs> we just feel like these are, these all are, this right now. Right, these are very <laughs> conservative requests. Yeah. yeah, I just feel like someone could look at it and be like, I think someone they, can, they don't need that. And it's like, well, whoa. athletics tends to yeah. have a little bit of a target because, you know, they're out there in front of the world and it looks like they have lots of cool mm -hmm. stuff. And, and, you know, they really, have cool. a small piece of the big budget well and that's but they're like, very uh, visible yeah that's one of my questions probably for another day but you know hearing mike talk about it and i know it's not the first year he's brought it up but that we have we rely on booster funds to appropriately staff our teams mm -hmm. yeah football is the that. biggest like, scariest one yeah and i in i went back and started reading our policies about like those ratios and look at that we're relying on boosters right. to meet a board policy yeah is a little disconcerting i will say so yeah. like long term i think that like it's not a question for today but the need is there but and right and, and and each year when we come up with like an incremental change or add it add a position yeah. or don't add a position and you know athletics unfortunately has to take a back seat when there's not sufficient resources because it's yeah. not the core academic programs. But but when the Bureau just had a bad right. fundraising year and yeah. we suddenly can't appropriately staff a team, right? That's not good. That's so, yeah. yeah. Well, and you're going against your own policy. Yes. Yeah. I'll stop now. That's fine. I have to go pick up that. <laughs> Kid from daycare, as we're talking about. Speaking of <laughs> other people caring for kids. No, feel free to keep going because I'm going to update no, myself. No, that's all right. Well, I think, this, I think this was a great start. And I think if we continue to add to this document based yep. on what you guys are hearing um, in just in your, in your travels in the community, plus what comes out of the budget roundtables. I think, I think we'll just like reshare this with everyone. Just be like, hey, by the way, this is a running document again right is there any questions that you guys have yeah, yeah. well because at the, at the end of the workshop we I, we hope to have time to dive into it and do yeah. a little bit of this kind of stuff but first of all it was too fresh for you you didn't even know what your questions were yet right, and then right. secondly we didn't really have the time so this would be a great time to circle around and yeah say, what are y'all thinking because i'm sure you know other people have questions right now that they could add to it right. yeah those workshops are so great, but it's like kind it's of fun lot. when you hear everything that's going on, but yeah. it is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. You really have also, to let it percolate. Yeah, and you're just sort of in awe of what they all do. That's why I love them, because yeah. I'm like They're so great. impressed. They're so informative. I'm so impressed. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what a team. Well, well, you do a lot of stuff, guys. <laughs> you know, all day I tell you, I've been I've been cashing in the special education department's been cashing in their golden tickets How like crazy. All of them. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it was know. great. It, it was, it's been awesome, though. Oh my god. Those it's are the most fun really classrooms. They do cool amazing. things. They do. Have and you been so, in the different buildings? Uh, Wentworth and Middle School. Yeah, and and um, 
it's just amazing. Also, just the amount of inclusion and and collaboration with general ed and special ed. It's like even even in the substantially, and I was in, you know, substantially separate behavioral rooms in the functional life skills room. Still, there's a lot. Yeah. They're all kind of invested and involved in different ways. Mm. You know, and that's just like a like well, half a day, a snapshot. Right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's there's cool. so much cool stuff coming. Yeah. I'm going to stop right, recording. Guys. Thank you. Yeah.